Yes, okay, this is 2.30. I, I think that uh, the best way is to, to start on time. I would like to welcome you, all of you on our next uh, urban intergroup meeting. Today we have a, a special uh, occasion because the, uh, there was a, a, a very important event um, in, in Ljubljana. And this is the event uh, um, uh, of the informal meeting of the ministers. Uh, uh, first of all, I would like to thank the uh, representative of the uh, Slovenian presidency for the invitation. I had a chance to represent the urban intergroup of, uh, together with the representative of our Regi committee the, the, on this meeting online. So uh, this, uh, this event was quite important. Why? Because the... Um, when we as intergroup, we from the very beginning, we not only observed, we were observing, but also we took an active part in the debate on concrete uh, documents which have been prepared by different presidencies, starting with the uh, a very uh, uh, famous uh, Leipzig Charter. And uh, of course, Leipzig Charter was not, not new because before, uh, before even uh, uh, enlargement, before 2004, we, there was a very, very famous um, uh, European initiative, Urban. And uh, uh, next it has been, uh, um, uh, it has been <clears throat> mainstreamed by the, uh, uh, in general, urban dimension of regional policy. But different presidencies, then in fact, they made it a kind of declaration um, the document, uh, 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 like a charter, a uh, Leipzig charter, which was about the um, uh, integrated approach, which was quite new at that time, through different uh, documents, uh, through different presidencies. Uh, uh, we remember very well the, uh, the, the process of preparing the Amsterdam Pact, Amsterdam Pact, which was the base for the urban agenda. And at that time, we had a chance to, to cooperate with the special urban envoy from the Dutch presidency. And of course, the, uh, uh, I think that um, uh, at least some, some ideas came from our meetings, from our intergroup. So uh, this uh, uh, Amsterdam Pact was, uh, um, of course, very, very interesting. Why? Because it was very practical. It introduced some, some practical solution like multi-level governance and uh, uh, introduce the partnerships, partnerships which are functioning uh, uh, until now. And uh, uh, after um, this Amsterdam Pact, the, um, there are also another initiative in Bucharest, but also <coughs> a so-called new Leipzig Charter, which um, it, 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 underline some of the main priorities of European Union inside the uh, urban dimension. And uh, uh, of course, it's, it's still not what we were uh, asking for uh, together with uh, my colleagues from the European Parliament, who I welcome very warmly, and uh, that uh, European Union needs a kind of European urban policy. And, uh, but it's still not the case. Uh, uh, nobody wants to, to, uh, to, to prove and to accept and to confirm that there is an urban policy, European urban policy, because if we have the, uh, if we have the kind of um, programming documents and if we have the, uh, even the part of fund, it is urban policy if we want it or not, if we think it's, it's important or not. It, so, so that's why the next step, I mean, the last one, uh, um, so-called Ljubljana Agreement, which uh, like the new Leipzig Charter has two different parts. One is the agreement as such, and another one is the uh, multi-level, prog multi-annual program for introducing the, this agreement. So this is another, another step in the process of preparing the urban, uh, um, urban dimension of European policy. Let me just underline the, some of the elements which probably will be discussed in, during our meeting. But uh, what was very uh, important for me as a representative of the, of the intergroup was the, 
the importance of small and medium cities, which was one of this element, but also the um, <coughs> the uh, the the new uh, uh, new uh, new uh, priorities. I mean, they are not new, but the question is which um, uh, fields we think are uh, uh, a priority today. And it's not by chance that during the Ljubljana agreement we can find, uh, as as you know, four of these uh, uh, main elements of priorities. Uh, uh, which is uh, 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 the cities of equality, uh, which is also uh, the case in the uh, in the new Leipzig Charter, but also what is the also the continuity is the greening city, but uh, what is new is um, uh, is underlying the food and food production etc cetera, etc cetera, in the cities and sustainable tourism. By the way, I don't know if you noticed that uh, uh, just some days ago, there is the new Eurostar winner, and the, the winner is, uh, the, uh, um, in fact, the, uh, someone who is specialized in the food production and food production in, in the city. So I think this is very significant that, that the, the element of food production is not the part of the common agriculture policy, but it's becoming more and more important in the cities. So today we would like to, uh, to uh, have some information about Ljubljana agreement. As I said, the new programming document which have been accepted by the ministers responsible for urban development in, from different member states which um, uh, uh, it happened in, in Ljubljana. So I, uh, I would like to, first of all to ask the uh, uh, our colleague uh, from Reggie Committee, the Vice Chair of the Reggie Committee, Vlad Marius Botos, uh, to uh, to uh, have to present at the uh, position of the Reggie Committee of European Parliament, who uh, 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 who was present during the meeting in in Ljubljana, and also the uh, our colleague um, uh, Christoph Hetman took the took the floor and present the view of the Reggie Committee. So. Uh, 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 Vlad Marius, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, dear colleague. Uh, unfortunately, Mr. Omarje, the president of Reggie Committee, couldn't be with us today. Um, as the vice chair of the Parliament's Committee on Regional Development, I can assure you that promoting the urban dimension of cohesion policy, which is one of the committee's core competencies, is high up in our list of priorities. This is even truer today as city faced a set of growing and complex challenges. The population living in cities consumes three quarters of the world's natural resources, produces half of global waste and over half of our planet's emissions. In this sense, urban areas have a key role to play in the union's fight against climate change. On the one hand, tackling pollution and reducing traffic congestion. On the other hand, promoting the circular economy, renewable energies and sustainable public transport. These are all now very pressing tasks. Moreover, cities are extremely vulnerable to the impact of climate change. Heat waves, which are often more extreme in cities are increasing in both intensity and frequency. Extreme precipitation and storm surges often result in flooding. In this context, I underline the role of the Committee on Regional Development through its active involvement in the mobilization of the European Union Solidarity Fund to provide assistance whenever and wherever is it required. Cities also face enormous social challenges such as long-standing inequalities, lack of affordable housing, social exclusion, poverty, the challenge of integrating migrants and the refugees, to name a few examples. Finally, cities were and still are on the front line of the COVID-19 pandemic crisis. This unprecedented public health crisis has accentuated many of the challenges that cities were already facing and has added to this. In some cases, the lack of access to essential services and to public and health care services become more evident than ever. 
unemployment and youth unemployment in particular has been exacerbated. Isolation, increased gender-based violence and the widening digital divide has created an explosive mix. I will not exhaustive in enumerating the challenges that urban areas are facing. No matter how great these challenges are, what matters mo most is to be able to work together to tackle them successfully. Urban authorities have a key role to play in this regard. Urban authorities have, for example, a key role in developing comprehensive strategies based on the European Green Deal. The European Digital Strategy on the long-term vision for the EU's rural area. Multi-level governance and the active involvement of urban authorities in accordance with the partnership principle are essential elements for the design and implementation of all EU programs. The role that urban areas play in the implementation of programs and projects der derived from a EU legislation is, in this sense, of increasing importance. Moreover, urban authorities have uh, responsibility for project selection under ER ERDF funding for sustainable urban development and under the new European Urban Initiative. Initiatives such as the new European Bauhaus are a chance for urban areas to display the renovation wave and projects prioritizing the circular economy, sustainability and biodiversity. Urban areas have a huge potential. They are key economic pillars to boost growth, create jobs and exchange the union's competitiveness and globalized economy. Despite the lack of Ex explicit EU competence on urban development, a broad range of EU initiatives to have an impact on cities. For their part, urban communities are key actors and stakeholders in the successful implementation of the EU funded policies, and it is high time we treat them as such. The members of the REGI committee, in particular, we have systematically showed their determination in defending the interest of cities and arming them with new tools and possibilities. In this context, the REACT EU regulation plays, for example, a central role in economic and social recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. And we can be proud that the Committee on Regional Development has given this file such a high priority. We can overall be proud that in addition to national resources, structural funds, are there to help find solutions and implement key policy me measures for urban areas. The European Parliament's Committee on Regional Development is commit committed to enhancing the impact of the urban agenda at union level. I'm therefore glad to have the opportunity to welcome today the Ljubljana Agreement and to demonstrate full support for these objectives. I must add, however, that the Regi Committee would be pleased to see the member states and the commission committing to implementing the recommendation of the urban agenda. The parliament is pleased that 400 million euro of the resources for the investment for jobs and growth goal will be allocated to the European Urban Initiative under direct or indirect management by the commission. And we encourage member states to provide greater resources in order to support the delivery of the urban agenda. We can all agree that our common goal is to maximize the impact of the urban agenda to make our cities resilient, robust, accessible, and affordable. Sustainable urban development is paramount importance for the economic, social, and territorial cohesion of the union, the quality of life of its citizen and for reaching climate neutrality by 2050 at least. From my side, as vice chair of the Committee on Regional Development, let me assure you that we will continue our effort to promote the urban dimension of cohesion policy for an integrated and sustainable development of European cities. Yes, <clears throat> thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, Vlad Marius Botas, Vice Chair of the Regi Committee, and I uh, hope if I can 
ask you um, if you can um, uh, if you can share the information and the, uh, the knowledge about the uh, Ljubljana agreement among the members of the Regi Committee. I think it will be very very useful for the Regi Committee members to 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 be. Uh, uh, informed about the, uh, the 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 new very very interesting documents. So thank you once again. And now I would like to give the floor uh, to Asha Rogeli, uh, Deputy Director General from the Ministry of the Environment and Special Planning from Slovenian Presidency. I mean from Slovenia, but representing today the Slovenia the Presidency. And we will be very grateful if you can present us the the main uh, elements of the Ljubljana agreement. Please, the floor is yours. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, dear members of European Parliament, uh, I will try to share my presentation with you and I hope I will be successful with that. Uh, Okay, so uh, dear members of the European Parliament, uh, the representatives of cities, uh, the representatives of regions, uh, dear partners and uh, colleagues, it's an honor for me to, to speak in front of you today. And I would like to thank uh, to Mr. Olbricht uh, and his team and Urban Intergroup to invite me to, to this uh, special event as uh, already mentioned, um, and uh, it's only two weeks uh, has passed that uh, ministers adopted Ljubljana agreement that was already mentioned today. But if you allow me uh, first, um, I would uh, say a few words about our presidency and priorities. And uh, we are very proud about the slogan that our presidency uses, uh, and uh, we consider it uh, quite uh, closely connected also to what we do in urban uh, matters, uh, meaning cooperation and uh, co-creation for the future of Europe. Uh, the slogan was selected as a response to the challenges faced by European Union and uh, to the questions about the future development uh, of Europe, which we are also dealing with uh, our partners, cities, regions, member states, commission, uh, European parliament, also within the urban agenda for the EU. And um, this uh, 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 slogan together, resilient Europe, I think it also reflects all our work. And, uh, dealing with the challenges such as pandemic uh, and uh, cyber resilience, uh, the, the challenges of green and digital transition, those are also the questions that our cities are facing and dealing with them within the multi-level and multi-stakeholder cooperation. So uh, only a few words uh, on that and uh, our ministry is uh, the ministry responsible for environment, but at the same time for the spatial development. So we, during the presidency, we were heading or chairing uh, two lines of uh, intergovernmental cooperation. That is uh, intergovernmental cooperation on territorial cohesion, as well as uh, intergovernmental cooperation on urban matters. But uh, in both of, of those uh, lines, our priority was to strengthen or uh, to, to show the need for the cooperation for good quality of life of all citizens in uh, Europe. We strongly believe that bridging divide among different territories in development policies uh, in long term can benefit stronger Europe and better living places for all uh, citizens. So uh, uh, under territorial cohesion cooperation structures, we were following uh, as uh, we usually say the inherited agenda, but at the same time, uh, we wanted to emphasize the 
territorial quality of life question as one of the national focuses. And uh, we were promoting the uh, linkages between the Territorial Agenda 2030 and new Leipzig Charter. So we tried to do this uh, in different ways, organizing joint uh, events, but also trying to link different uh, pilot actions that are taken or, uh, or um, implemented under the Territorial Agenda as as well as different priority teams and cooperation within urban agenda for the EU. So um, there is no secret that in urban matters, our first priority was uh, on Ljubljana agreement, which is deriving from a joint trio program following new uh, Leipzig charter adopted uh, during German presidency. But again, we try to focus our priorities, uh, or let's say uh, content wise, on um, aspects of uh, impo high importance for Slovene presidency, that is green, uh, green part of urban dimension. Uh, and here we try to connect this national focus with the results of so-called green partnerships from the first generation of urban agenda, especially focusing on uh, their recommendations or let's say messages in the better regulation pillar. Um, what we did was that for the past uh, two years uh, in the uh, cooperation with EUKN, with the support of EUKN, we we organized different policy labs on national and international level, um, discussing the recommendations that uh, urban agenda partnerships, different urban agenda partnerships, I think it was six or seven of them, uh, like uh, um, uh, climate, uh, climate change or air, uh, air pollution and uh, 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 nature-based solutions uh, partnership and um, uh, sustainable mobility partnership and uh, circular economy partnership. We were trying to get the main recommendations in the better pillar, discussing them with different uh, uh, stakeholders, uh, also including the representatives of uh, uh, ministries who are responsible on national level for, for those questions and legislation. And the results of those uh, um, discussions for the first, past two years uh, will be presented also as information to the environmental ministers at their meeting um, uh, end of December this year under Slovene presidency. So uh, our aim here was not only to keep the discussions on the results uh, or actions of uh, urban agenda partnerships within the circle of urban ministers, but also inform the ministers who are responsible for taking the legislation uh, on national level uh, on these issues, mostly uh, ministers for environment, to hear what the cities are uh, recommending or messaging uh, in the field of uh, better legislation. Mm, the second uh, national focus we wanted to deal here uh, during our presidency was also um, focus on national urban policies. So at the, every meeting of intergovernmental cooperation, uh, we um, uh, we devoted the time for to present to uh, national urban policies uh, with a special focus. So during the, the Slovene presidency, six national urban policies were presented. Um, Slovene and uh, Dutch national urban policy with a focus on uh, strategic, uh, strategic uh, dimension of national urban policy. Then we had uh, um, Polish and uh, Portuguese national urban policy presented with the focus of um, 
actions uh, and measures taken for better uh, communication and cooperation among different levels of government, meaning uh, cooperation with the ministries and uh, cities and regions to implement this national urban policy. And um, as the last set uh, of uh, presentations of national urban policies, uh, there was Luxembourg and Germany presenting uh, the role of small and medium sized cities uh, within their national urban policies. Uh, and of course, uh, as mentioned uh, many times, uh, Slovenian presidency also uh, tried to uh, put forward the, the affordable housing as one uh, an important uh, dimension of uh, urban policies uh, uh, as such. So, um, now, uh, if we go slowly to Ljubljana agreement, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, Ljubljana agreement is uh, not a document that would be considered as a, only as a document of one presidency. We strongly believe that uh, Ljubljana agreement is uh, only one document in line that is reflecting long time discussions and cooperation uh, also already from, from the past. And uh, we believe that urban agenda for the EU that was uh, established uh, uh, with the Pact of Amsterdam in 2016 is an important uh, milestone in the cooperation uh, among different levels of governance in EU, uh, bringing cities uh, behind the table uh, of, of policymakers on EU level. And um, uh, so for, for, for uh, addressing the, the, mm, the challenges uh, Europe is, addre is addressing uh, in general, considering the development of cities and uh, diminishing the differences among different territories, this cooperation can bring added value uh, also in the future. Um, and as already mentioned, uh, we see that there is a line of different documents paving the way to the, uh, to the uh, point where we are today and uh, allowing uh, cities to, to participate uh, more actively in the um, creation of uh, EU policies in the future. And we strongly believe also that European, European Parliament has an important role also in this process, that it's not only the process of cities, member states and the commission. Uh, for us, uh, the most fresh documents we built on are of course deriving from the trio presidency. And uh, if we want to follow the principles of new Leipzig Charter, we need to enable all uh, European cities to lead just green and productive policies for the interest of all citizens inside the cities as well as outside of urban areas and cities. And, uh, Statistics shows that uh, EU has more than 8,300 uh, cities and towns in its urban network. Global Europe has only few important cities, but still we are considered to be the most urbanized continent. Uh, so our added value is in strong urban network where all cities play a specific role. So all cities needs to be considered in these discussions, development discussions on the development policies equally. And uh, this was one of the red lines also for the Ljubljana agreement. So as uh, the document is building on the new Leipzig Charter principles, but also on the co-creative uh, process and discussion that was held during the Portuguese presidency resulting in four input papers. Um, 
that were the basis for uh, creation of, uh, of the text that was adopted by the ministers uh, end of November in, in Ljubljana. And um, we just followed the process that was established already before. So um, during our presidency, there was not much time actually <laughs> for creating some, something really new. So uh, we like to say that we just developed further what it was already created before, allowing all the stakeholders uh, to participate uh, in this process. And we are really glad that everybody, everybody who is involved in Urban Agenda for the EU did participate uh, actively and created and uh, uh, creatively and um, try to, to bring something into this document. And uh, um, you can see that we created in this very short period of time, six drafts, which means that we really uh, strived into the, um, um, into the, the, the way that um, all the ideas, uh, all the positions could be integrated, of course, uh, if they follow uh, the, the general, um, general, let's say, red line, meaning that uh, uh, we need to continue with uh, cooperation under Urban Agenda for the EU, uh, strengthening it uh, and uh, bringing the cities uh, into the, the processes of policy making on, on, uh, on EU level. Uh, document as such, uh, the document called Ljubljana Agreement has two parts, the, the main declarative part and uh, uh, annex uh, called multi-annual working program. And the purpose of this document uh, and the annex is to secure the sustainability and continuation of the process over more than only one presidency. It still allows all the stakeholders to cooperate and bring on the table uh, the, the, the most relevant questions that needs to be addressed jointly and uh, the questions that need to be solved in order to improve the development conditions for the common good of all citizens. The Ljubljana Agreement uh, declaration part uh, in the beginning uh, reaffirmed, reaffirms uh, the important documents um, that were already um, developed and adopted in the past. The documents for the uh, development and implementation of urban agenda. It's linking urban agenda to uh, current uh, global and new strategies and programs and initiatives. It's emphasizing the importance of cities of all sizes. sizes uh, if we are building the development policies for all citizens. It's uh, emphasizing the importance of different uh, parties that already uh, cooperated in the process uh, uh, in the first generation, it uh, acknowledges and recognizes the work done by the partnerships uh, from the first uh, period of cooperation and reaffirms the poly, uh, priority teams that were established with the Pact of Amsterdam and to edit priority teams uh, within the Bucharest declaration. And as main agreements, uh, first thing that uh, it needs to be said is that a Ljubljana agreement needs to be always read together with the Pact of Amsterdam. And that Ljubljana agreement is reaffirming the Pact of Amsterdam, which remains valid. It um, adds the multi-annual working program, as I already said, with the purpose of uh, 
trying to overcome the six months programs of the presidencies so that we can have kind of path uh, for a longer period uh, that we know where we are heading. So not that everybody starts to deal with the question uh, when uh, uh, every six months. Uh, the three pillars, better regulation, better funding, and better knowledge uh, remain in the focus of uh, urban agenda for the EU cooperation. And uh, four new teams are added to the list of the existing priority teams. Uh, so uh, extending the, we uh, called those priority teams the SDGs of urban agenda for the EU. Um, it's uh, the agreement of the ministers uh, is also to address all those different priority teams that were already, uh, how to say, uh, the task for discussion in the past generation of urban agenda. And uh, they need to be addressed again to see what angles were not Mm, reflected yet, or if there are still some actions that need to be taken. But uh, for that, uh, discussion has to be raised uh, and uh, some kind of uh, revision of uh, uh, existing results and uh, uh, revision of future uh, cooperation priorities should be set on the table, where we agreed that this needs to be done as soon as possible. And therefore we, uh, uh, the minister said uh, the year of 2023 as uh, the year when this revision uh, should, be, should be implemented. Uh, why? Uh, because uh, in 2022, um, uh, the 2022 is, let's say, reserved for testing the novelties that uh, Ljubljana Agreement is bringing in uh, the, the urban agenda for the EU process. Um, and and uh, uh, we need some time to test those novelties uh, that we will address also a little bit later in, uh, uh, under the presentation of uh, multi-annual working program. Um, so uh, the new Leipzig Charter and its implementing document, uh, they are bringing also um, uh, in um, the term other forms of cooperation, which is deriving from the study on, um, um, on the su successfulness of the past urban agenda cooperation. One of the um, one of the uh, proposals was also to, to have, to allow other forms of cooperation than partnerships, which would be more flexible in the future to, to react faster uh, on the, let's say, more uh, uh, hot problems or challenges, or to address only one uh, pillar and so. But the discussion showed that we, uh, don't know yet what kind of these other forms of uh, cooperation are. So uh, the ministers could uh, did agree that those other forms of cooperation needs to be tested and everybody who is uh, prepared to, to uh, try to work on what other forms of cooperation besides partnerships could be, um, they are, uh, they are, um, um, uh, invited to, to cooperate with UDG and DGUM uh, in the future year to see what these kind of forms of cooperation could be. There are already some ideas uh, and uh, some cities like uh, Harlem uh, that have experience from the past partnerships did propose uh, this kind of, uh, let's say, test uh, exercise uh, in 2020. Uh, 2022. Um, uh, so yes, uh, as I already mentioned, uh, 
2022, the, the piloting or testing of novelties will start for that using the two uh, new teams that are added to the, uh, to the uh, list of priority teams. So uh, to set the first uh, partnerships in 2022, uh, those will be on greening cities and sustainable tourism. So if we continue the, um, uh, one of the focuses and um, agreements of Ljubljana, uh, of, of the ministers in Ljubljana was also to strengthen and to continue the cooperation between Urban Agenda for the EU and intergovernmental cooperation um, in the future. Uh, the, the main governance structures should stay the same and uh, uh, the, uh, the, the, um, uh, the messages of the, uh, of the partnerships and other forms of cooperation should be addressed regularly on different levels within uh, uh, structures of intergovernmental cooperation, but as well as on higher level, which is setting quite uh, uh, important uh, role also on defining those questions to be set uh, in the future on different levels, um, uh, which means that uh, cooperation also on in governmental structures uh, should be strengthened and supported by the Commission. Uh, one of the important things for Slovenia um, is the inclusion of small and medium-sized authorities in the urban agenda process uh, and the importance of stimulating and supporting those small and medium-sized uh, cities to be and towns to be involved in the process as such, not only in partnerships, but uh, also in uh, other discussions. And for that, we call uh, the commission to support them, uh, to, to support this, as well as member states and other partners uh, in the future. Um, so there are also some agreements related to the communication and dissemination points. And one of uh, uh, important issues as already mentioned in the, in, uh, in the beginning is that if we really want to have strong uh, cities, then we need uh, to discuss them uh, together with uh, different territories. So therefore the, the discussions in intergovernmental cooperation uh, on urban matters and uh, territorial cohesion should be uh, better linked also in the future. And now if we come to, to the multi-annual working program, which is basically the framework, as, as said, it's the framework for the cooperation to overcome the different presidency priorities. Um, the uh, uh, the multi-annual working program is set for the period of 2022 uh, to 2026 with the possibility of revision in, uh, in between, if necessary, especially uh, because the year 2022 and possibly the year 2023 will be kind of um, um, experimental years uh, for testing those novelties. Uh, the governance of the urban agenda for the EU uh, is uh, still based on the UDG and DGUM and uh, defining uh, or let's say redefining the role of different parties involved in the urban agenda for the EU process, uh, deriving already, already from the Pact of Amsterdam. Uh, the UATPG is a technical preparatory group that was established um, in between uh, to support the cooperation uh, within structures and discussions for on urban agenda and uh, action coordinating, and it's still kept for the future. 
but this is only a technical group and it has no uh, decision making uh, possibilities. Uh, for the monitoring and reporting, there are slight changes uh, added with this new multi-annual work program. Since the Pact of Amsterdam is calling uh, partnerships to report uh, more regularly, now we consider that uh, it's uh, important for the partnerships to um, report um, at least at midterm and, and at the end of cooperation. But what is added is that uh, there is a call for exchanges with the European Parliamentary Committees and Urban Intergroup uh, uh, with UDG and DGU in the future. So that um, different uh, events uh, should be or uh, could be organized in the future uh, jointly with uh, those structures, reflecting the results and discussing the results of, of the partnerships, of course. So as uh, already mentioned uh, to the 14 um, priority teams, uh, the four new, uh, new teams are added and uh, we hope that um, in 2022, two new partnerships will be established on greening cities and sustainable tourism. And that in 2023, we could already be, um, be establishing new partnerships also on the cities of equality and uh, uh, the topic of food as mentioned by Mr. Orbicht before. The, the process of defining those four teams uh, took uh, five months. Uh, it was a fast uh, explorative process that uh, Slovene presidency did uh, together with uh, Eurocities, CMR and uh, uh, Committee of Regions. Um, so uh, basically those four teams are deriving uh, from, from the needs of the cities. Uh, and were not uh, delegated from the top down or from the commission or from the member states. So we believe that those teams are really important uh, for the cities. And therefore, uh, I think there was no objection to support uh, all four of them uh, in the future. Uh, so now we are coming uh, to, to new, uh, to novelties, as I already mentioned before. These are especially ex ante assessment and uh, new way of selection of partners. And those uh, novelties are mostly uh, there to improve the cooperation within the partnerships of, or other forms of cooperation uh, to enable them to work uh, faster with higher security of support and um, uh, to, to result uh, in more focused way so that uh, because the experience from the first generation of cooperation is also that sometimes uh, the partners were lost uh, without guidance in how they should work together and what they should address what urban agenda is and what is the purpose of addressing three different pillars and uh, one important thing here is also uh, the support for, for the small and medium sized cities and inclusion of small and medium sized cities in uh, future multi level and multi stakeholder cooperation. So, as um, I mentioned before, the other forms of cooperation, um, we could not set strictly what other forms of cooperation uh, are. But basically, uh, other forms of cooperation are as well as multi-level and multi-stakeholder um, um, partnerships, uh, but focusing in time, focusing in content, focusing on one of the pillars, meaning that they could bring results on the table faster, bringing recommendations to specific um, uh, groups, target groups uh, in, in shorter period and with even maybe greater effect uh, in the future. Um, so 
maybe to show you uh, a little bit how uh, this could look like uh, these activities and tasks in uh, the the in the next few years uh, so after the adoption of Ljubljana agreement and uh, setting the four new uh, teams uh, uh, by the end of our uh, presidency in 2022 the process of text, te uh, testing the ex ante assessment uh, would start. Uh, I can say here that uh, our colleagues at the DG Regio, they already started the activities uh, to, um, uh, to involve the experts who would support the ex ante assessment uh, on the two selected teams, greening cities and sustainable tourism. After that, uh, we would have guidelines that we could open the um, support the open call for partners, uh, resulting in uh, establishing of partnerships by the end of 2022. And in 2022, there also be there, there, there should be a start of discussions on the commun communication and dissemination uh, work. Uh, of uh, results and activities of urban agenda of the EU in the future. And uh, as already mentioned uh, in the, uh, under the other forms of cooperation, there are some initiatives of the cities, uh, what uh, kind of uh, cooperation this could be. And uh, I believe that uh, uh, UDG and DGUM will pay uh, attention to what they can tell us, uh, what they, how do they see this uh, way of faster cooperation in the future so that maybe in the next years we can define what other forms of cooperation uh, besides partnership could also be. Um, in 2023, there should be a revision of priority teams and cross-cutting issues mentioned before, and the possibilities, uh, possibility of launching uh, the process for establishing uh, two new partnerships on food and cities of equality could start in 2023. Um, if we will uh, reach the goal of revising the priority teams and cross-cutting issues, I believe that um, this is this will be the basis uh, for the the defining the new ways of cooperation in 2024 and 2025, uh, 2025 um, and establishing new partnerships. What we all agreed uh, uh, within Urban Agenda for the EU uh, is that um, the first generation of cooperation in the process was really intensive, uh, establishing 14 partnerships, and that uh, maybe in the future, if we deal with a bit less partnerships, so that we don't work on the quantity, but that, it, that if we work on the quality of this cooperation, would even bring uh, more added value for, uh, for urban agenda, and uh, for the cities and their messages uh, to the proper, let's say, years in the future. Because uh, our starting point uh, and the position of Slovenia was uh, from all the beginning that urban agenda partnerships are not projects because we have many cohesion policy instruments that support projects, but urban agenda for the EU is the process that allows uh, cities to Co, uh, to get involved in the policy making, not only implementing uh, different measures. So with that, uh, I would uh, like to thank you. And uh, I'm uh, ready to answer questions if you have. Um, and um, I would like to thank everybody who was supporting us in this task. And as my colleague said, nothing that ends is ended. It only means that this is new beginning. Thank you.
Yes, thank you. And uh, 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 immediately I will ask the question before giving the floor to representative of the Organization of Cities. I have the, um, the question to Director uh, Asharogei is the, do you have any ideas what will you do after the uh, Soviet presidency? Because I remember that the, the, the Dutch envoy, state envoy after the Dutch presidency. What about the uh, Slovenian presidency? Do you have any plans to stay? Or I mean, not in presidency, of course, but do you want to, 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 to follow or to monitor or to lead your activities? Because your plan is going absolutely outside of Slovenian presidency. So well, please, very short answer, because I will give the floor to the other participants, please. Yes, of course. Maybe we are not called uh, Slovene urban envoy, but definitely it's, it, we were already active before the Slovenian presidency and we will continue this. And uh, we consider the Slovenian presidency to be also uh, one of the promoters of the small and medium sized cities in relation to, to, uh, to uh, strengthening the whole urban dimension in the uh, development of the whole European territory. And that is one of our priorities that we will definitely follow also in the future. Yes, so we keep your promise and uh, the, the cities and the members of the parliament who are interested, we will, we will refer to you during different presidencies and we hope that the Slovenian government will be helpful in this matter. Thank you very much. And now I have two representatives of the Association of Cities, the uh, coming from Euro Cities and CMR. First, I would like to give the floor to Dorothy Nielsen, who is the executive director of Euro Cities. Please, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Jan. Uh, thank you for the invitation and for organizing uh, this uh, session uh, this afternoon. It's a pleasure to uh, to participate, of course, uh, as always, and to have the opportunity to uh, uh, to compliment uh, and give also our views uh, on the uh, on this uh, Ljubljana agreement that's been uh, that's been adopted. Uh, and I want to start by congratulating the Slovenian uh, presidency, of course, that together with the trio partners has done really a huge amount of work to. Uh, uh, to ensure that this uh, Ljubljana agreement uh, was adopted, which in uh, uh, in intergovernment working in intergovernmental settings uh, is uh, is never just uh, editing and adopting a document. It really does represent quite a big uh, challenge, uh, working towards unanimity and having everybody on board. Uh, so uh, congratulations with the good results, uh, Osa. Um, we I wanted uh, so for us, uh, I wanted just to emphasize from the from, uh, from Eurocities, uh, some, some of the things that we feel are important and has been important, uh, both related to Ljubljana agreement and going forward uh, on, the, on the urban agenda. Um, and I think with the Ljubljana agreement, we now have sort of a very uh, strong political document with, uh, with, a, with a commitment to uh, the continued implementation of the urban agenda, which I think for just, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, we couldn't really take for granted uh, once the first phase of the implementation of the Pact of Amsterdam uh, establishing the urban agenda had been implemented. There was a lot of sort of reassessment. Uh, what has been the deliverables? What is the added value of this urban agenda, this way of working and things? And, and, and uh, uh, we're really pleased to see that this has fallen out very positively, of course. In Euro cities, we're part of all the uh, 12, uh, uh, all the 14 partnerships uh, uh, that uh, established that was established during the first phase of the open agenda, and uh, could see the uh, the benefits of this uh, very particular way of uh, of working in partnerships and across level of uh, of governments. Uh, so it's great to see that we are now uh, off to sort of uh, uh, a second phase, implementing the principle of the of the Pact of Amsterdam, and with a refreshed uh, approach in the uh, set out in the Ljubljana Agreement and a new impetus and new political support for it. I think we have a, a clear way forward that is uh, rooted in uh, in uh, in this multi-annual work program, uh, which uh, was uh, presented. Uh, which actually, I suppose, more than a multi-annual work program, it's more of a handbook 
to uh, the partners in terms of uh, roles, uh, but uh, particularly related to the open agenda, this is actually quite important, and it's the uh, and it's the sort of the fundamentals of ensuring the uh, uh, the ongoing uh, implementation that there's clarity about the roles and responsibilities of uh, uh, of all the partners at the different levels of uh, of government, so the expectations are aligned. Uh, uh, a next step is, of course, I, I think, as it was also talked about, is probably also then to develop the content then uh, uh, a bit more and then actually sort of plan out what is it in terms of deliverables that uh, this uh, uh, that this Ljubljana agreement will um, <clears throat> will be the um, will set the ground for. And uh, we're extremely pleased with the collaboration that we've had together with CMR, COR, and uh, and the Slovenian presidency on developing these uh, themes that. Uh, uh, that are now part of, uh, of the Ljubljana uh, Agreement, Sustainable Tourism, Greening Cities, Cities of Equality and, and Food Production. Uh, we feel that, of course, these are all uh, uh, extremely relevant um, in the uh, looking forward, uh, both currently and looking forward, and are really good additions to the to the existing list of uh, of priority themes for the urban agenda. It's extremely hard to keep that list of priority themes uh, 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 very narrow. Uh, there are an infinite number of challenges uh, in in cities where multi level collaboration makes a lot of sense in terms of how best to tackle those challenges. Uh, and I think, but here with uh, particularly going ahead on sustainable tourism and, and greening cities, uh, the sooner the better. I think that this can go ahead. In some ways, it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, understandable. I mean, this uh, multi-level collaboration and partnerships takes a long time. Uh, but uh, but the sooner the, the, these uh, partnerships can go ahead, the better. I think on sustainable tourism, we know that many cities are looking in and really it touches up on so many areas of work in the cities revitalizing the city centers what do we do with all uh, the uh, the data aspects uh, that uh, relates to how airbnb is operating how um, in the cities uh, and how do we diversify economy as well in those cities where uh, tourism has scaled back so there's quite a lot of challenges then for the for the uh, uh, greening, uh, greening the cities, it's an essential element of delivering the European objectives for uh, uh, for uh, climate neutrality. The cities must become uh, greener, and and we've worked together with the Commission on some urban greening plans, toolkits, and guidelines for this. So there is a really good uh, foundation for this work to uh, uh, to take off with uh, some toolbox or uh, some tools already. Uh, and it can also help deliver the objectives for tree planting at, uh, at European level. Um, so uh, I think this uh, overall, then it's good to see that um, there is both a diversification of tools in the open agenda with this uh, new to be defined uh, uh, other ways of uh, cooperating. Uh, but the partnerships we've seen um, uh, previously really does give good credibility for the uh, for the open agenda because it's clear that uh, although there is a strong focus on sort of the governance of the urban agenda, uh, we do actually also see that there is, a, it's also about tackling the challenges and working together. And there are some deliverables, there are some recommendations coming out of that. And that was also quite clear coming out of the sort of first phase and the implementation of the Pact of Amsterdam. Uh, so uh, what we have worked for in this, uh, uh, in the, what was important for us in this, uh, uh, process of uh, the Ljubljana uh, agreement was to secure this uh, multi-level, multi-stakeholder dimension of the of the urban agenda to make sure that that was uh, reinforced stronger, to ensure also a stronger governance, uh, both at political and technical level. And this is particularly relevant for then the uh, the better regulation strands. We heard there is the three strands of work of the uh, on the urban agenda: better regulation, better funding, and, and better knowledge sharing. And particularly that uh, strand on uh, on better regulation has been quite challenging and continues to be quite challenging, not least because it is incredibly long term. So the recommendations that comes out of uh, of uh, of the different partnerships, the recommendations on what are the challenges related to implementing the EU legislations on the ground, it takes quite a long time to sort of for them to fit into the uh, EU uh, policy development process and to then make a full a full turn through the uh, decision-making process as well, and then to 
to actually uh, for that feedback to be to become fully integrated in, in an updated uh, legislative framework at, at European level. So that sort of better regulation strand, it, it continues to be quite challenging, and, and I think we all need to look at also our expectations uh, for it. I'm saying this also as um, I'm part of the uh, Commission's uh, Fit for Future platform who looks at the better regulation aspects and the, uh, uh, the ability of that platform, I can say as a member of integrating these uh, comments, so if they're not completely aligned with what the Commission is planning to review in any case, the ability to take on comments from, from stakeholders is quite limited, but now there is a have your say portal that the partnerships as they get uh, to work should also be using because the input from uh, from that uh, portal we're receiving them uh, directly in the uh, in the Fit for Future platform. Um, <clears throat> we've also worked for um, uh, to make sure that these uh, new partner partner new partners which focuses on the on the relevant uh, themes and, that are aligned with both local and, and EU level priorities. So I think those three aspects that were important for us, we're really pleased to see that uh, uh, that they have come up reinforced in the. Um, in the uh, in the open uh, in the open agenda as as it's expressed in the um, uh, in the uh, Ljubljana agreement. So uh, I think our overall assessment is that really is a lot of potential uh, in the uh, it going forward for the for the open agenda. Uh, when we have this combination of uh, multi-level uh, collaboration combined with a technical support that still needs to be sort of refined, and, uh, we know the Commission is both working to do that, uh, then there is quite a good capacity to actually uh, contribute to tackling uh, some uh, challenges at, uh, at local level. But of course, it's a complex setting, uh, and we see that as a stakeholder in the process, I think, from the perspective of, of your cities, it's quite a complex setting uh, for uh, with the intergovernmental framework, collaborating then with the European Commission, uh, who operates under some slightly sort of different uh, uh, terms. Uh, but we, I think overall then, yeah, a great new impetus here uh, that, uh, um, that still, uh, we still need to uh, make sure that there's the adequate investment into it so it actually delivers and it doesn't just become a framework and a governance structure. Uh, we need to ensure that that sort of investments uh, are put into it as we previously uh, did in the in the past uh, phase with, as I was saying, your cities, we were members of all the uh, of all the uh, of all the partnerships. Um, and I'm hoping we can be as well in the two new ones going going forward. And we've also uh, we will also reach out, of course, a lot to our membership to see if they uh, what the possibilities are for them to to participate. But it, of course, also requires really the ongoing investment, also in the partnerships. And when the job becomes concrete and the the solutions need to be found, the the the, uh, the details of the partnerships and the focus of them needs to be defined. Then that's where the work really starts. And then we need the ongoing investment, of course, both from uh, particularly from the member states and, and then also from the commission, but we also have a commission who has many challenges to tackle at European level and many packages to deliver. So we're hoping that it's going to be uh, to be possible. But overall, I think uh, I think it's also worth the two last points, if I may. I think there are, um, uh, what we see is also that we have a different reality of for the European uh, urban agenda than what we had in 2016 when it was first ad adopted as the Pact of Amsterdam. Um, a, a, the, uh, it was uh, new and it set sort of an umbrella for, for, for cities working at, uh, at, at European level. Now we have uh, many competing initiatives and we have uh, also very high profile initiatives at European level, for example, the mission on 100 climate neutral cities, which is a different way of working, of course, it's a different framework, but it competes also uh, in terms of what the urban agenda can do and what the level of ambition for the urban agenda should be. And it's always been in your cities, our ambition for the urban agenda to sort of set a framework for other initiatives to have sort of a meaningful uh, cooperation and, uh, and a structure for uh, for urban initiatives at, at European level, but we have a much more sort of an ecosystem of many many different uh, initiatives, and the urban agenda is one of those, uh, which is uh, sometimes uh, challenging to navigate in. And we get requests as well for cities to ask sort of where should we invest our attention and our resources. Uh, so that's it's a different context from back in twenty uh, in in twenty sixteen from when the urban agenda was initially. Um, Adopted, and then just one last point. 
I, I think we should remain also, and also following uh, your presentation, also, we should all partners involved in the implementation of the urban agenda, we should all uh, keep our sort of, um, uh, uh, we should all be alert to sort of keeping the balance right between the governance of the of the framework and then the the output of it uh, and to make sure that we have that balance right the governance is extremely important in this sort of partnership approach and at intergovernmental level but at the same time it, it can't be heavier if you like than the output uh, that is coming out and that i think we all need to sort of remain very critical around and to make sure that that balance is, is reached but having said that we're really pleased to see that uh, there is such a good result at the table and uh, uh, we will remain a very sort of dedicated and engaged uh, partner working uh, across uh, uh, with other stakeholders and, uh, uh, <clears throat> and uh, with the different levels of government. So thank you very much. Yes, uh, thank you. Thank you very much, Dothe. And uh, uh, I hope that uh, uh, Madam Director, she goes to look at the uh, at the chat. We will be back on this because there is also immediately the uh, reaction concerning, especially the uh, better regulation, which has also been mentioned by uh, Dorothy Nielsen, that the you know uh, 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 the uh, Executive Director of Eurostate is making it very very politely saying, you know, the regulation is not very very clear. But uh, the question is, what we were asking from the very beginning is what about the follow-up? What about the follow-up of, uh, of the partnerships? And how can we guarantee that the ideas coming from the partnerships can be really taken on board and uh, to, to change the regulation, to make it better fun, better regulation, et cetera. But before going to the answer to this chat question, I would like to give the thought to Frédéric Vallier the Secretary General of CMR, Frederic de Florizios. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Jan, and uh, thank you uh, to all of you. Uh, nice, to, nice to be with you. And, and, and let me start by congratulating uh, Aza also for, for her, her personal investment into this work, because uh, we, we have seen how much uh, uh, she has uh, invested in, in, in this work. So. Congratulations for uh, this achievement, uh, which we see uh, uh, ourselves as a, as a new evolution of the relations between the institutions and uh, cities. Uh, I mean, if we, if we go back to the first Leipzig Charter uh, and then the Pact of Amsterdam, the second Leipzig Charter, and now this uh, Ljubljana Agreement, uh, we see that there is a, a, a growing recognition of the role of cities in the European governance. Uh, everything is not perfect, of course, and I share very much what uh, Jan, uh, you, were, uh, you were mentioning, uh, but we see that uh, uh, there, is a, there is an evolution. And this is, this is uh, uh, not only because the, the member states uh, uh, want to recognize cities in what they're doing, but it's also because cities are uh, uh, effectively implementing uh, a lot of the European uh, uh, policies. And we see it uh, through the mobilization they had in fighting the pandemic, in uh, tackling climate change, in uh, 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 giving support or providing support to migrants uh, to, for integration programs, uh, to fight inequalities and provide basic services in their territories. Uh, so this is uh, uh, why we uh, very much believe that uh, this next phase of the European uh, uh, integration has to recognize cities uh, as uh, 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 not only partners, but uh, uh, shapers of the uh, European uh, priorities, the European policies, alongside with regions and with uh, uh, the member states. Uh, and, and, and that leads me to say that we, uh, of course, have promoted uh, uh, along all these years the principle of partnership. Uh, the governance needs to be a partnership between all levels. Uh, and, uh, and, and so we were very happy to participate in uh, the informal ministerial meeting, of course, on the 26th of November, uh, together also with the uh, National Association of uh, urban uh, uh, urban cities of Slovenia, uh, and uh, and and uh, 
uh, CMR has been uh, committing, committed all along the, the process uh, as this agreement is in line with what we, we believe. The EU presidencies, the member states and the European commissions have been demonstrating during this process their willingness to engage and involve the municipalities, the cities and regions of all sizes. And I insist on that, like uh, Jan, uh, uh, you were mentioning, it's important also to recognize the role of intermediate and medium-sized cities uh, in, in these processes. This last point is very important for us to give a clear signal that any European municipality uh, uh, which, whatever its size, uh, was welcome to engage in the urban agenda, recognizing the diversity which unites us in Europe. Also, the acknowledgement in the agreement that national associations representing local and regional governments have a role to mobilize, raise awareness, support and represent is crucial, and we hope that uh, through these signals we will give even more traction to the urban agenda in, in the coming years. We hope that the next generations of partnerships will be representatives of the richness and diversity of local and regional governments in Europe. Indeed, for this to happen, it will require true commitment from the municipalities and regions, but also call on member states and on the commission to bring their support, in particular for those municipalities and regions that are smaller or less used to engage in, uh, in European cooperation or with less capacities. We see for them a real opportunity for learning and for uh, building their capacities through their participation in the different thematic partnerships. It is also important to recall that while the thematic partnerships are the main method of implementing the the agenda should not be limited to them. The urban agenda and the new Leipzig Charter set principles that are also valid to, uh, at local, regional, and national level. The objective of the common good, the integrated approach to urban development, the participation and co-creation, the multi-level governance or partnership uh, governance, and the place-based approach for this, we strongly encourage member states to continue engaging regularly with the representatives of municipalities, cities, and regions and implement the urban agenda by discussing better regulation, better knowledge, and better funding at the national level as well. And we saw recently with the recovery plans that this is not, uh, this is not set in, uh, in ground. We very much appreciated working with the previous presidencies that contributed to the elaboration of the Ljubljana Agreement, and in particular with the Slovenian presidency. In this process, you have been attentive to our proposals and to the priorities for municipalities and regions, especially we are glad that our proposals together with Eurocities and new on, of the new themes that will be the next generation of the uh, uh, partnerships, cities of equality, urban food, greening cities, and sustainable tourism were uh, uh, validated. The uh, Council of European Municipalities and Regions remains committed to the success of the urban agenda. And we hope, of course, that the Commission can um, uh, give support to the participation of all uh, uh, partners in this urban agenda. We will continue promoting it to the European municipalities and engage with the EU institutions and member states for its successful implementation. And we will, of course, uh, also mobilize our members, national associations, uh, to participate uh, when uh, necessary. We are also committed to the success of the new Leipzig Charter, of course, especially thanks to the reference framework for sustainable cities, which is a tool developed with the French government uh, to support cities in the implementation of the first Leipzig Charter, but which has proved its adequacy and capacity to be renewed as it is increasingly used also by cities interested in implementing the SDGs uh, and the global agenda. We're looking forward to work with everyone, member states, and the European Parliament for the future of the urban agenda, 
in particular with the intergroup, of course, and the rigid committee, the start of next generation of partnerships and the implementation of the new Latches Charter in the coming month and years. Thank you very much, Jan. Yes. Uh, I hope my uh, connection was good enough because it, it kind of... Uh, yes, okay. Uh, okay. Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, I think this is now the time to, uh, to, to uh, uh, find a short debate. I think that my colleague Andreas uh, Schieder can, can uh, moderate it, but I propose Andreas and the other colleagues that more probably we can start with the chat, especially when the, the question was about regulation. And um, I see Marcos uh, Samper, uh, he wants to take the floor immediately, but I, I will give now the, uh, the, the, the moderation to, to Andreas. But, but I think especially when we have, we have several members of the parliament together with us. And uh, for example, Constance Krell is, I think here, and so as a rapporteur for, for, uh, for in general for the uh, uh, CPR. And, um, uh, and of course, Monica Vanna, who is very active in all these environmental issues. So I think that we have uh, three questions, uh, remarks on the chat. Andreas, if you can just show yourself, you if you are with us, uh, uh, Andreas Schieder, my, uh, Vice President of the Intergroup. Hello, yes. Uh, hello, okay, Jan. So hello, everybody. I can pass the moderation to you. You have three questions in the chat, and the, the members want also uh, yeah. to ask before. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Jan, and uh, good, good afternoon also. Uh, from, from my side, and as Jan perfectly was uh, introducing, we have uh, uh, high experience also here in, in, uh, in our audience, and I will immediately start. So we take Monica, and then after Monica, we take uh, Marcos Ross Sempre. Thank you very much uh, indeed. Thank you uh, to all for the very informative contributions. I have one question. I uh, I uh, wrote it also in the chat because on the one hand, I'm very, very happy about this new Ljubljana agreement. I think it's a step, uh, a real step forward in the urban agenda. And I'm especially happy about the two new uh, themes, city of equality and greening cities among the four. Uh, but my question is seeing the slides of Mrs. Deputy Director General, uh, when you showed us the timeline, I saw that um, uh, concerning the cities of equality that I find very important uh, given the pandemic and given uh, the fact that tackling inequalities and social resilience are a, a high priority theme for the whole European Union. So I'm very uh, unhappy that it starts so late. And on the slides, uh, you write that there is only a possible ex ante assessment on the two topics, food, and uh, city of equalities. And at the same time, in 2023, we have a review of the whole process, the whole topics. So is it possible, just uh, a question of understanding, is it possible that this review in 2023 skips the two new topics, uh, food and uh, cities of equality, um, again, out of the topics, or is it is it sure that we start these two topics then? Because on the slides you wrote possibly ex ante assessment, and I just want clarity on that. What the practical value of these new topics, food and especially uh, uh, cities of equality, is now? And my second question, a very short question to uh, Dorothy Nielsen, because I'm very happy that you mentioned investments. I think that's a really a crucial point in all. Um, all our debates, because one side is the paper, and of course the Ljubljana agreement is a good step forward on paper, of course, also, but now we need to implement all the actions. And I have a question on uh, what you think about the uh, capacities of cities in the next years to make all these investments in all these priority areas. Because uh, given the fact that uh, we, uh, we discuss, for example, the re-implementation of the Stability and Growth Pact uh, at the latest in 2023, um, and, and, and on the other hand, we debate uh, flexibility of the Stability and Growth Pact and exclusion of investments like climate or other. So uh, 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 what do you think about that? Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Thank you uh, for, for these um, not only questions, but uh, 
I think a very good discussion point. Uh, next one is Mark uh, Marcos uh, Rosempre, and then is Julian Schall. Thank you, thank Marcos. you, thank you very much, Andreas. Yes, do, do you listen to me? Yes. Thank you very much, Andreas, for giving me the floor. Uh, thank you also, Jan, for organizing this meeting. Uh, and thank you to, very much to all the speakers on this excellent seminar for bringing to the parliament the opportunity to address this very important topic for us, the adoption of the Ljubljana Agreement two weeks ago. I believe that the short reaction time of this group in meeting uh, is a very important thing of uh, the commitment that some of our members have with respect to the European Urban Agenda. And precisely, I miss that this commitment is reflected in our parliament uh, having a more uh, active role, a more key role in the development of this tool. This is something that uh, we have been missing for some time, oh, the parliament, not this group, oh, the, the whole parliament, of course. Uh, on the other hand, regarding the, the approved approve agreement, I think it is a good document uh, and I believe it reflects very positively all the current concerns in relation to the development of cities and territories. I also think it is very good idea to recognize the role of cities and regions in implementing the linking matrix of policies identified in the multi-annual work program that can help to achieve the objectives and priorities. Inter alia, the European Green Deal, the European Digital Strategy, the European Pillar of Social Rights, the Renovation Wave, the New European Bauhaus Initiative, and Precisely regarding the New European Bauhaus, I would like to emphasize its importance and its close relationship with the European Urban Agenda, but which unfortunately has not yet been really reflected by the moment, only in this small mention in the Ljubljana Agreement. Uh, I, I believe that we need to uh, make a stronger this connection. As you may know, very soon the work for the drafting of uh, an own initiative report on the new European Bajos will start in our parliament. Uh, I will be the rapporteur from the CAL committee, and I think it will be essential to take into account the, its urban dimension and try to build a relationship, a relationship between the new European Bajos and the urban agenda for the uh, European Union. Another reflection, and I am almost uh, to finish, uh, I would like to launch, is that we have the Pact of Amsterdam in 2010, the Treaty of Leipzig with its implementation document 2020, and now the Ljubljana Agreement, which is multi-year work plan for the coming years 2022 to 2026. It is good to work on many documents and plans, but I think we all have the feeling that we are always missing is a better coordination of European state and territorial policies with the European Urban Agenda to pass from the paper, from the documents to the real, uh, the real uh, urban dimension to the citizens. And what about local urban agendas? When, when, will, when will they start to play a decisive role and, for example, become almost imperative for the sustainable development of cities and territories of all cities? We also need them. Uh, finally, I would like to finish by asking two questions. Uh, why have uh, there been no members uh, of the European Parliament in the elaboration of the EU Urban Agenda uh, Technical Preparatory Group, or there are representatives of, of the rest of the European institutions? And do we know the organizations involved intend to develop the link matrix for a real and effective coordination of the European Urban Agenda and the other programs? That's all. Thank you for your time. And I again, I reiterate my thanks to Jan and uh, all of you for this meeting. I am sorry I had to move to another uh, working group, but uh, one of my assistants will take note of the responses of uh, my question. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Marcos. Uh, and uh, thank you for the, 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 the remarks and the good question. The next one in the chat is Julian Schall. From Eurotown, please, Julian. Yes, thank you um, for giving me the floor and also for the interesting discussion. My name is Julian Jarl. I'm the Secretary General of, of Eurotown, uh, the European Network of Small and Medium Sized Cities. And on behalf of Eurotown, we would like to thank you, the Slovenian presidents, and also all participants uh, for working hard towards the Ljubljana Agreement. We think also that this agreement and also the multi annual working program 
are a great success for all the thousands of small, medium and bigger cities in Europe. And we are uh, expressly welcoming the growing importance of small and medium sized cities in the discussion for the next EU urban agenda. And also as Eurotowns, we will try to continue to serve as a partner to involve more small and medium sized cities in the uh, urban agenda partnerships. But it's also raised in the discussion before, it's also a question of capacities. So therefore, the question to you, Oza, and also the Frederick and, 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 and Dörte, how, how we can improve the capacities um, also to, to better involve small and medium sized cities. And also what are concretely the next steps uh, for this pilot uh, partnerships in 2022 for greening cities and um, sustainable tourism. But thank you very much. Thank you, Julian Schaal, and uh, Constanze Grail wrote as she had to leave, uh, but I don't see any further requests for the floor. If I, okay, now I see, is Peter Austin, please. Thank you very much. Is it connected? Yes. yes. Uh, I, I, I work in the city of Oslo. I've been involved with EuroCities for about 12 years. We, I, I'm vice chair of a network which is called the Metropolitan Areas Working Group. Uh, and we played quite an active role in, in developing uh, certain elements of the Leipzig Charter together with the OBACT team and, and uh, other cities. Uh, and I was very pleased when the Leipzig Charter made a, quite a strong point of the uh, regional aspect, the, the city areas, city regions, metropolitan areas. Uh, there are many ways of describing uh, the, the relation between cities and its surrounding areas. Now, our, our, main, our main point that we've been exploring for a long time with support of the OECD and of course some of the European uh, funded uh, initiatives is that cities are not able to achieve a number of the big strategic objectives, some of the main European policy goals without close cooperation with the neighbors. Uh, transport is the obvious uh, uh, area, housing, environmental policy, economic development policy very often. Uh, food is uh, going to be a very, very strong candidate, I think, in the city regional uh, dialogue. Uh, I'm asking two questions, really. One is uh, how far the next generation of the urban agenda is likely to take this metropolitan perspective on board, because it really was missing in most of the first generation urban agenda partnerships. Uh, the only one that I'm, the only, only partnership where I'm, that I'm aware it was very clearly highlighted was the uh, circular economy uh, partnership, which I assume will be continuing in some form in the new generation. The other question is, is related to that. Uh, we're also aware that there's a very strong initiative from uh, other networks and so on <clears throat> to develop what I would call a rural agenda. Uh, it's uh, taking various forms and, and, and names within the, the, the networks and, and, and political institutions and, and, and so on. Uh, and it's, it's being crystallized at the moment. It's becoming an important factor, I think, and it will be a, a, a strong block in, in guiding regional policy uh, funding as well. Uh, we need to find links between the rural and the urban, and there's been a lot of uh, sporadic discussions about urban rural. And I would hope that the uh, next generation urban agenda is able to make a very clear point that urban rural is actually part of the process that needs to be resolved in a number number of areas. It, it, it's the same kind of question as I had just now, but th th it's not so much a governance question, it's more a question of the substance. What are the actual links there are between the urban and, and the rural areas surrounding cities? Not, not, not the, the deep rural in the high mountains and so on, but with the, the, the neighbours which uh, where the food is often produced for the cities, where there's uh, green landscape and so on. I think these are two important questions I would like to see uh, pushed forward in, in, the, uh, in the next generation urban agenda. Thank you. Thank you for uh, putting this question. So now, I don't see any further uh, raised hands or wishes to take the floor. If this is, I would 
uh, ask who, who, who will start trying to give answers. The questions, of course, were not only to one person dedicated and catching several, several ones, but who wants to start answering? Who could start? Maybe it's even better than wanting. So maybe the, we can ask a Slovenian, yeah, Asha. Yes. Please. So maybe yes, I will not answer probably all of the questions, uh, but I will try. So um, the first question in the chat is related to better regulation pillar and the outcomes. Uh, we are aware. We are all aware and. The, the, Assessment studies show also that the better regulation pillar was one of the weakest links in the first generation uh, uh, cooperation on the urban agenda. But uh, it was not that weak either. So we could learn some something from, from there. Uh, so uh, already one year and a half ago, I think, uh, uh, the Dutch uh, colleagues uh, started to support uh, better regulation initiative, which uh, resulted also in the kind of recommendations for the future partnerships, uh, how they could address the questions uh, under better regulation pillar. And uh, we believe that this initiative should be taken further also in the future, because one of the weakest uh, points uh, was also that. Uh, in most cases, in many cases, not uh, the partnerships, uh, the partners in the partnerships didn't know exactly how to address the pillar of better regulation, what that could bring them and what it means basically for, for them. There were only few who were really skilled on uh, or had the, the, the knowledge on what they are dealing with. And, um, that's also uh, probably why the result, the general result of the, the first generation urban agenda cooperation is uh, uh, resulting lower number of activities in the better regulation in comparison to the activities in better knowledge pillar. But uh, this is one aspect. The second aspect is that uh, as, as I try to, to, to show during the presentation, uh, in Slovenia, we saw that uh, some partnerships uh, when, where Slovenia or Slovene cities were partners in, uh, let's say uh, the partnership on uh, circular economy and the partnership on, uh, uh, on uh, sustainable land use and nature-based solutions, they proposed uh, some uh, recommendations or actions in the field of better regulation. And since we are also the Ministry of Environment, we thought that those questions uh, could be addressed uh, to our colleagues who are dealing with the EU legislation, national legislation in these fields. So what we did was uh, taking all those activities uh, on national level with support of the UPN, uh, inviting uh, inviting uh, colleagues from, from environmental part of the ministry. We are special planners. Uh, so we were inviting those who are preparing the, the legislation on, uh, on uh, water or waste or others uh, related, uh, relating from the recommendations of, uh, of the partnerships. And uh, those messages now, they were gathered in a, two-page uh, leaflet uh, and they will be uh, put as information to the European um, environmental ministers at the NV Council that will be held on 20 December. So we think that this is also one way how we can proceed uh, in this uh, relation. Of course, the ambition would be, and it was already in the beginning in, in Amsterdam, I remember because I was there, that the commission would be the first one who would uptake those messages from the better uh, regulation. Uh, but, you know, 
uh, I think that uh, urban agenda process is a process. It's a process. It's something experimental, and we can all uh, try to participate where where we can. So this was one of the things that we did as Slovenia and Slovene presidency on uh, better regulation also as uh, similar as uh, Dutch colleagues did with this study for uh, empowering the future partnerships uh, on the better regulation pillar also. Um, this is one question. The other question, I think it was related why uh, if, uh, no, why the, uh, the um, cities of equality was not taken for the first uh, block of uh, testing partner pilot partnerships in, in 2022. Well, um, basically the Slovene presidency was uh, surprised that we got four thematic uh, proposals in the table in such short time, which were uh, prepared uh, very well, uh, addressed uh, with very significant uh, emphasis on the topics and uh, we expected there would be one or two, but we had four. And we all knew that if we want to test the novelties such as ex ante assessment and pool for partnerships, which we didn't use until now, we, it's not possible to use it on the larger number of, of thematic priorities. So we had to decide on which, uh, uh, which of the four we would, uh, use this testing way and uh, we had to vote. So it was democratic uh, approach at the DG, uh, DG level. So at the meeting of directors generals for urban matters, there was a vote. So those topics that got most votes, those topics were put forward as the first ones. But of course, uh, everybody was agreeing that uh, the, 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 the other two that were not put as the pilot partnerships in 2022 would not be left behind since the minister, if they would be left behind, the ministers would not uh, take the decision that they are added as the topics to the 14 priority teams. So um, uh, the word of possibly established, it's only because there was no decision taken yet. That's why we use the word possibly because the ministers didn't decide to establish them in 2023. Maybe the decision will be even faster than 2023. So uh, let's hope the two topics are there. Uh, I believe and uh, as I have the information, the future presidencies will address those topics, especially the cities of uh, equality deeper so uh, there is a potential that, that, that this, this uh, partnership could be even uh, brought faster in the, uh, in the future on the table. Um, I don't know if there is another question that would be, uh -huh, there was also another question uh, from, uh, I think Mr. Rossembra, um about why uh, about the the uatpg and the membership and the urban uh, technical preparatory group urban agenda technical preparatory group was established in um uh, in 20, 2019 already and the membership was kept also now uh, so there were no uh, changes on the membership but uh, of course, everything is uh, still a uh, place of discussion in the future, if there would be interest possibly to be raised also at the UDG and DG level in the future. Maybe for now I can stop and give uh, <laughs> the floor also to the others. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, somebody else in the capacity to answer uh, the remaining questions. Uh, thank you also Asa, Asha Rogeli for, for uh, more or less answering already most of the questions as, as far as it was possible for you. Um, 
I'm still looking if, if, if somebody still wants to take the floor, could take the floor. Uh, yes, I'm happy to. Uh, yes, please. Yeah, to talk yeah. To, uh, the question. Thank you, Chair. Uh, th thank you to uh, Monica Vanna for the question and also for the question from uh, from Eurotown, which is a little bit, a bit linked to uh, the questions when we talk about sort of investment and capacity. Um, <clears throat> On the uh, on the point on sort of what's the capacity in cities to then um, uh, to then commit to doing the investment that it requires to implement uh, actions that comes from the partnerships. It's uh, it, I, I think it's an it's an open question and it, 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 there is a lot of sort of well it depends on the sort of the type of actions and how cost uh, intensive they're going to be. Uh, uh, what we have seen so far. Uh, is that the partnerships having very limited um, uh, financial resources in as for the work process as such? What is possible to do uh, when it's based on sort of almost a pro bono or, or, or the the investments into the partnership is is uh, is uh, the minds and the hands of of people? So it's uh, it's the human resource that goes into uh, into the uh, debates uh, and into shaping the. The, the solutions for challenges in in the uh, but then the uh, the um, uh, the uh, actions that are proposed and the implementation of those are also adapted to that. So we've seen a lot of toolkits, for example, a lot of guidance, and then the recommendations for for better uh, regulations uh, actions as well, uh, which are not sort of uh, cost intensive as implementing major infrastructure transformation processes uh, projects in in, uh, in in cities, of course. Um, so the, uh, but we've also seen, and this is uh, purely based on, on experience uh, from the previous uh, uh, partnerships that uh, there are sort of real capacity issues in the, in the smaller cities in particular to, uh, to, to participate. And it is a bit easier for the, for the larger cities to, uh, to, uh, uh, to ensure that, the, that they uh, can input into the, uh, into the partnership because it is really quite, um, uh, work intensive the uh, the partnerships it costs a lot of hours I think on the people that are participating in, in those partnerships uh, um, uh, a lot of hours and and some travel costs as well huh? so uh, so I just uh, a thought then in terms of sort of what do we do with capacity building for uh, for smaller cities and obviously the urban agenda needs to be a balanced initiative that creates opportunities for cities of all sizes to uh, to participate. The question is how best to do it and do we need to do everything in the partnerships themselves so the partnerships are quite uh, sort of short they're there to uh, develop um, uh, suggestions for solutions to test actions that can help tackle some of the challenges that relate to the themes of the different partnerships it's a short process it's partners who have not worked together before that are trying to work together it's partners with very different perspectives sometimes uh, from different levels of government so they're there is enough challenges to uh, uh, let on, on that basis alone. So if you also have a capacity challenge added to that, it becomes then uh, uh, very uh, difficult, I think, for the partnerships to actually uh, deliver. So I was wondering if maybe we even uh, trying to do too much, if we need sort of a pipeline uh, for a pipeline of, uh, of this for the smaller cities to uh, which does the capacity building before there is then participation in, in the partnerships. Uh, that is a resource question then for the urban agenda, uh, for the urban agenda, and maybe something to be facilitated by a technical secretariat. Uh, if uh, if it's the uh, purpose of the urban agenda to then uh, uh, build this capacity for uh, more cities and of all sizes, and particularly the small ones as well, to be able to uh, contribute in the longer term and uh, make their voices heard also in the European policy development process. Uh, but doing both. Uh, solving, doing both sort of uh, problem solving, action plan development, and capacity building, uh, uh, tackling capacity building challenges in one go in the very sort of work intensive uh, process of the partnerships. I don't know if it's uh, if uh, if it's if it's trying to do too much. Yeah. And then there were some um, there were some comments about uh, uh, all the links that we need to make. Also, uh, uh, Peter Austin made the comments from on uh, urban rural. Uh, the rural agenda, the vision for rural areas that is being developed at European level for 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 uh, for, for 2040, the uh, new European Bauhaus uh, 
which I think, yes, these are all, I think uh, uh, it's part of, it becomes a very sort of a uh, busy ecosystem of, uh, of initiatives that needs to connect. Very often sort of this connect coordination is, uh, is about getting people to talk together and to see what are the sort of uh, the added value of the different initiatives, what are the complementarities and try to at least coordinate so there's not too many overlaps at least. But uh, that uh, many of these initiatives once they started very often have their own logic and their own driving uh, forces. Uh, and uh, and it could be curious to see that maybe this rural vision for, for Europe could maybe actually be a driver for stronger urban rural co collaboration uh, together, of course, with the with the urban agenda for the EU. Uh, but uh, but in terms of the lead on it, it could maybe actually be be there. Um, so and there was one last question on why the European Parliament wasn't uh, involved so far. It, this is not at all a formal. Uh, uh, response or so anything. I think we've really appreciated so far the great collaboration with the urban inter inter urban uh, urban intergroup on the on the sort of these regular updates on everything that relates to the urban agenda and also the previous partnerships were really fruitful. I think more for sort of the formal participation of the parliament. There could be a question sort of a, what's the phone number? Who do you call? Who represents the European uh, uh, Parliament in uh, in in these discussions uh, across all political groups across different committees and things? But uh, that's more to throw back in the in the court to throw the ball back in the court of the European Parliament. But thanks. Uh, thank you, Dr. Nielsen from from Eurocities. So I, I'm looking at uh, uh, Frederick <coughs> Yes, please go yes. ahead. Very, very briefly, because I think uh, many things have been said uh, already. Uh, now, I, I would like to uh, maybe uh, uh, say a few words also about how these partnerships are functioning, uh, and I think it's a, it's a, it, it is a great opportunity to really uh, work and build recommendations. But uh, it's true that it's based on uh, the voluntary uh, participation of representatives of uh, cities uh, uh, and, uh, on, 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 on our side and, and, uh, uh, and cities don't always have the, the even big cities, the capacity to invest so much time in, uh, in, in, in this. So that's a really a call also for, for the commission to, to give some more uh, uh, support. And in particular, if we want to integrate smaller, medium uh, sized cities, uh, I, I think it would be very difficult for medium-sized cities, to be honest, and Dorothy Dor said it, to invest so much time in, uh, in in this partnership. But many of the recommendations that uh, come out of the partnerships uh, are uh, uh, um, can be applied in, in medium-sized cities. So uh, I think it would be uh, it would be very uh, important to see how we can. Uh, open this process, or I don't know, uh, uh, reflect on uh, 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 how to make sure that uh, uh, the, the recommendations can be shared also with uh, medium, medium and smaller size cities uh, for, for, for some, uh, some inputs also in it. But uh, I, again, I, I don't know how we can build that. But uh, also, uh, uh, I think one, one thing that is important that I would like to say before we, we end this meeting, is what do we do with the recommendations? And that's uh, uh, also uh, something where the European Parliament uh, and the Commission have a role to play. Also, of course, uh, the members always, uh, if we want to, to be successful in, uh, in, 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 this, uh, in this partnership. Um, that that would be my comment, and uh, or otherwise I share what Dorothy said. So I'm not going to repeat it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Frederic Valier. Uh, thank you, uh, somebody else. If not, I think we anyway came to the end of our uh, planned agenda, and uh, to avoid that now, everybody, let's say, is is sneaking out. Uh, I, I want to share with you also that in the chat, uh, Vasilios Margaras uh, is, is uh, uh, sharing uh, a, a very positive impression of today's discussion. Uh, so maybe we come simply uh, to the end. It's, I just try to look not to, let's say, ignore somebody's request, but I haven't seen one. Uh, so as nobody's shouting, probably I've seen rightly, then uh, 
I, I want to thank uh, especially Jan for, for organizing this, but also all distinguished uh, speakers uh, from today, which enabled us as the urban intergroup in the European Parliament to uh, not only uh, get to know what's going on, but also to share and, and try to be the, the link between urban politics, European Commission, European Council and uh, the Parliament, which of course the Parliament has been directly elected, also very often directly elected in cities, uh, can can play especially uh, very good this this link and try to make also the best out of it of, of uh, European programs and approaches because sometimes the programs are better than the implementation and sometimes it's because of lack of knowledge and sometimes also a uh, lack of discussion. So therefore the urban intergroup always wants to provide this kind of information and exchange uh, in order to have tailor-made also answers on the questions. Like uh, today, uh, anyway, uh, I think one thing is very important to say that the Ljubljana uh, agreement uh, is a step forward, a big step forward, which we can really welcome very warmly. I think it is important also to show that with the Ljubljana agreement and with the impact of the Slovenian presidency, we, we went in urban dimension of the politics also uh, some steps forward. There are a lot of issues which especially can be tackled in the in the cities, uh, cities acting also as regions because uh, due to the amount of people living there, due to the size, uh, of course, cities are, let's say, the, the most important regions also of the, of the European Union in the sense of uh, who, who is there. And of course, a city is never isolated. A city is also surrounded and living in, this, in, an, in, an, in a region and therefore, of course, is also given an impact on the region. Uh, there is uh, a lot of debates which we have to follow up in the future, especially on this field, like uh, how, how to tackle climate change, how to implement the greener policy, which we also discussed here and which was mentioned also by uh, Monica Vanna today uh, in, in the debate. Uh, I think these are some important issues, but also social resilience, social coherence, uh, uh, closing the social gap, it is always a big issue in the cities. So while social gaps get wider in the cities, you see it firstly and uh, uh, the most hard. And therefore, also cities have to be entitled to to, to work on social resilience. And uh, as, as also was discussed today about cities of equality, I think this um, is taking a lot of uh, questions of the society. It's about the equality of uh, several groups of our societies where maybe even in the last decade equality became more unequal. So therefore this is also to be done. Uh, 2026 is the, let's say, the time frame, which sounds quite long, but as it's already end of 21, it is, it's a uh, half of a decade. So it's also, we know by implementing sometimes is not very much, but of course, uh, you will never hear from the urban intergroup in the European Parliament that we are happy if something takes long because we are the pressure group for having immediate, uh, always on the point uh, action. Uh, so therefore, I think we, we go for this. Finally, I think uh, I want to thank also our partners uh, was joining in this seminar and debate, but also to be our partners as the Urban Intergroup. I also want to always thank uh, Katashina, uh, which in the office of, of uh, Jan is, uh, is, is the source of organizing all these important events. And I want to thank you all uh, to be here and uh, hope to see you soon on the next events. And in the meantime, uh, Jan gave it to me because he had to, to sneak out uh, to wish you also a good uh, Christmas holidays and a good change of the year. Stay safe, stay healthy, and hopefully next year we will come out also in a more not only COVID debate uh, environment in full strength like in the past. All the best for 2022. Thank you for joining us and have a nice afternoon.